The age of the e-journal. It's taken a long time to get here. And this is when the first of them started to appear, between the 70s and the 80s. But we're now way past the 2000s. There's been a whole stack of technology has appeared since then, some of which you may recognise and some of which you may not. That's what one of the very first magazines, it was a scurrilous student piece of literature, massively circulated on the networks from 1985 onwards. And eventually they got to the stage where they could actually do some decent looking typesetting and produce a journal that actually looked like a journal. This is Solstice, an electronic journal of geography and mathematics from 1993. Then of course the word processor came along. That's what a word processor file looks like inside. Not nice. And then came along typesetters. That looks a little bit more sensible. You can actually read that. And then along came the World Wide Web. And then a whole lot of difference between doing it in a typesetter and doing it on the web, as you can see. But it's there. So that means now that we've got a mechanism by which we can publish journals on the web and because they're in a standard format inside, which you can't see, we can make the whole thing appear as a PDF as well. Same content, single file, two different appearances. The PDF does not need to look like the web page because they're two different targets. One is for navigating interactively, the other is for sitting in the bath and reading. So who doesn't get addressed in all? The answer is the authors don't get addressed in all this. I assume you're all authors. You all write. I'm not trying to insult you. <laughs> I use the same about editors. Authors don't learn to be typesetters. They shouldn't have to and they shouldn't need to. But they are being forced to participate in the process. That's what happens to Word if you try to turn on all the things that you need. It's not very useful. And of course, what about the editors? How many people here have functioned as an editor for a whole issue of a journal or actually run a journal? Okay, quite, quite a few people. So you know the problem from both ends. You've had to deal with authors and you as authors have had to deal with editors. Mm. E-journals, no matter how clever they are, can't teach some of the most basic and fundamental things that we need to teach students how to find authors and articles, checking the tone of the articles, proofreading, fiddling around with figures and tables, getting the references and citations right, the corrections, and the nitpicking. And the bit at the bottom which you can't see says consistency, 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 because of course that's the key to producing something which is visually acceptable, is that it looks consistent. The moment you ask authors to undertake that, it falls to pieces because everybody wants to do stuff their own way. And the one thing, of course, that they can't teach at all is this. And you can't see the title on that, but the doctor is saying, your x-ray showed a broken rib, but we packed it up in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> this is possibly the most important thing that we can teach the students. Don't paste over the cracks. Fix the wall. Don't use Photoshop to patch up the x-ray, treat the patient. Don't make your document look pretty without also making it usable. And again and again, this can be applied in a number of cases, and applied to something we're talking about here. Don't tie your teaching and learning information and bind it to a single platform like an iPad or an Android or whatever. Publish the information in a globally consumable format which any device can access for long-term usage. There is a technique in most word processes called styles. They are not widely taught. I have no idea why. They enable you to tell the computer what this thing is and how it should look. They are massively useful an enormous time saver. And using these is how we do electronic journals. That says title. 
because that is a title. It's not a bunch of text in 24-point charter. It's a title. So don't tell the computer it's a bunch of text in 24-point charter. Tell it it's a title. It can put it into the right typeface. That is an author. That is an affiliation. That is an epigraph. That is a heading. That is a paragraph. Provided your word processor has got this stuff labelled correctly, turning it into an e-journal is almost child's play. Omit that lot, and it's basically just a picture. What you've done is ended up painting a document rather than writing it. And so we use it. And so drop it in, and out comes an article in a journal. This is the Boolean, the postgraduate uh, doctoral research journal, now in its second year, I'm happy to say. And again, it could be turned into a PDF in the same manner. And so we have shortened the whole process from the article through the editor, through a server and a review process, and out the other end into a web page and a PDF. And all we've done is added a handful of styles to the ones that are already in the word processor you use. The ones with a star are already in your word processor right now, using the style sheet that the editors of the journals provide to their authors. We've added a few that, for some obscure reason, are not in the default author affiliation, abstract, <coughs> appendix, figure, reference, and citation. Not difficult to handle. Very small, very short learning curve, very small amount of information to take in. That's what George Boole's mathematical analysis of logic would have looked like had he been using a word processor. Doing the same thing. Tying each thing to a style. So what are we teaching editors and authors in doing this? One of the most important things is how to handle the bogus characters. There is a vast amount of people who are using antique or obsolete hardware and software who can't produce some of the characters they want, either because they're not there or because they don't know how to. I have had people trying to use an italic N to represent a Greek etta. Not a good idea. And I have had a German author use a Greek beta instead of a German est set because they couldn't find the est set on the keyboard or in the word processor. Of course, this has to be done before you publish, otherwise your article looks like rubbish. We have to teach people how to distinguish a new paragraph from a new line. If somebody hits the enter key in mid-title, they will end up with two titles. This is not meaningful. You have to understand WYSIWYM. Who's come across WYSIWYM? You have, I know. What you see is what you meant. Not what it looks like. What it looks like, we can deal with. What you mean is much more important. How to help avoid authors avoid novelty hunting. Oh, I don't like the style of your journal. I want my section headings in pink with a green background, please. No, go away, you horrible little author. You can't have that. It's my journal. You know, we have to deal with this. People will try very hard to persuade you that their way of doing it is better than yours. And for consistency, in a professional publication, you need to maintain your view of the journal. Improving references, we're dealing with that one at the moment, and submitting to Cora, which you've already heard about, and to respond to social media linking. Students use it all the time. We now have to master the technique of showing them how to implement social media linking as part of their professional life not just as consumers of information, but as providers of information. A copy of this paper, and uh, the full paper, and the slides is at that address, which is the homepage of the journals. And thank you very much. Once you get it, it's a, a leap of faith. But once you see it work, it, it, it actually falls into place really easily. Makes more sense once you've done it. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have any undergraduate 
journals um, for you to see what you No, not through ours. There are some, but we don't run them. They tend to, the problem with undergraduate journals is they don't have any continuity from year to year. So they tend to spring up and disappear. I mean, there's the um, Cork Online Law Review, which is put together by undergraduates, but that has moved from platform to platform over many years and is now in serious risk of losing all their earlier articles because they're not in the preservable form. Bad, bad idea. But no, we don't at the moment, but if a student wants to come up with one, absolutely. Yeah. No problem. 